Okay, so let's talk about uh, Biosprue.x, uh, the first 512 bytes that uh, live on the partition that uh, you're trying to boot from. Um, we talked a little bit about, uh, so I want to clear up uh, something that I think might have been a little confusing in the last video, which where we touched on this. Um, in, so this jump is absolute. It's always going to jump to begin. The question that I was concerned with was whether or not this begin was specified with a relative uh, offset or an absolute address. Um, I disassembled it to double check and this EB um, instruction <clears throat> or EB opcode uh, does specify a 8-bit relative offset. Um, I believe that so and if you look at if you want to specify an absolute offset you have to like uh, it's not done with an immediate operand. You have to store it in a register or a memory location. So if you did that, the way that you would do it would probably be like jump, like star begin, but you would have to have the address that you want to jump to stored in a memory location already. Um, so anyway, uh, it's relative, which it should be. Um, everything's good there. Um, we talked about this long jump, fixing up this boot segment to be 7C0 instead of zero. Um, so everything's you know working good so far. Set up the stack. Um, I mentioned briefly like um, about how like making sure that your stack isn't gonna collide with your code or your data. Uh, this starts at like 7BFC. So just like four bytes before the uh, the code, um, but then it's going to grow towards lower addresses. So it's going to go towards zero when you push stuff on. So everything's good there, um, and we set up our data segment to be the same as the CS segment. You know, we don't have to worry about the serial stuff. Um, we're going to pretty print this message. Um, and yeah, check if, uh, you know, if we have shift flags held, then we'll like print a uh, exclamation point. We're not gonna worry too much about that because, you know, you shouldn't try and force CHS. But yeah, we print the message. Um, we'll try to do LBA reads. Um, we should always like, you know, this is testing to make sure we're not on a floppy. So like, yeah, this is old code. It's talking about floppies. Um, anyway, um, but like, you know, assuming that we're not on a floppy, um, we're gonna check and make sure that we have LBA. We talked about this a little bit last time, so I'm kind of glossing over it. Um, but assuming we have um, LBA, we load the address of load LBA into load FS block load fs block starts off with the address of load chs um, but basically we're going to call load fs block um, to load a file system block um, into memory and the you know we're either going to use lba the lba mode or the chs mode depending on which one we have so you know this just enables the code to be uh, or a lot of the code to be agnostic of whether or not we're using LBA or CHS. Um, assuming that works, we jump to get going. I'm gonna assume it does because, you know, you should be using that. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna do is load the file system block that has the inode for boot into memory. Um, we're like, normally you would calculate, like look up like the root directory, uh, figure out which inode boot was, look up the appropriate inode block um, that way, but uh, that takes too much code. <laughs> so we're just going to move, like paste in, they just paste in, like you're 
after you compile this code, you actually have to paste in the correct block into the assembly. But, you know, that's what they do. Um, and they paste that in, and we, you know, inode segment is 7A0, I believe. So that's where we load the inode. Um, and then we call load FS block. Um, and notice that there's a star here. So we're calling the address stored at load FS block, not, you know, jumping to load the load FS block address itself. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, and then so something about file system blocks that's like kind of interesting is usually for OpenBSD file systems, and this is configurable, but the default is that it's gonna be eight kilobytes long. Um, so whenever you read in a file system block, you always read in eight kilobytes. Um, but you don't have to always access a file system block it, that eight kilobytes at a multiple of eight kilobytes. You can access it usually at a multiple of like two kilobytes. And the reason why is like the first, you know, well, every block except file system block that you load in except the last, you are going to like access at an offset of eight kilobytes. Um, or at, it's gonna be at an offset that's a multiple of eight kilobytes. But the last one could be at a multiple of two kilobytes. Um, and what that does is it allows that last sort of um, eight kilobyte multiple to store the ends uh, the last little bits of multiple files. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty clever because having a large file system block uh, reduces fragmentation, and then having those blocks be addressable at those two kilobyte granularity uh, saves you from wasting space. So, um, it sort of nullifies the traditional trade-off of larger file system block gives you, you know, less fragmentation, but more waste. It uh, kind of gives you, you know, a little bit better, uh, best of both worlds kind of a situation. So, uh, but anyway, once we've loaded the file, the inode into memory, the inode has a list of disk addresses. Um, so, you know, the, uh, um, or yeah, it has a list of disk block addresses. Um, and so we load that offset, uh, we paste that directly into memory, but that's a list of all of the places in the disk that have file system data in order. Um, <clears throat> and technically, so the first like eight or nine or so are direct blocks. So the address that you see in the first like of first of the list of like 12 or of, of the first eight, the address that you see is the address of a block that has file system data. Starting with like the ninth or the 10th, um, it's a pointer to a block that has more blocks that point to actual file system data. So it's just a way most files, you know, aren't gonna, you know, are gonna be small probably. When they get bigger, you save a little space in like how big the inode is by like offsetting some of that stuff to uh, just random file system blocks uh, when you need it. So anyway, um, and the number of blocks that we're supposed to read in also gets patched in. That's, you know, calculated outside this program. Um, and we read in the number of direct blocks first. Um, this load blocks does that. Um, you can see we call load FS block to do that. Um, and then once we're done with, you know, either all of it or just the direct blocks, we will uh, like take, um, we'll check um, if we have more to read, we'll load in that indirect block, uh, the same place we loaded the inode and then uh, continue reading file system blocks. But, uh, and that's what's done here. Um, load that block in, but anyway, and then it'll jump back to load blocks. Um, but anyway, whenever we're done, we jump to, you know, done load. Um, 
which prints a uh, fancy new line um, and then uh, puts the, the load address uh, into ES. And then we check and make sure that um, it's an ELF file, basically. Um, so, yeah, make sure that we actually loaded something that we were supposed to. Um, and if we did, we jump to exec boot, um, which pushes the, this is a fancy way of pushing the, pushing EAX, uh, saves a couple bytes. You know, you can see they're real conscious of how big this code's gonna be. Um, and then, like once that's done, we push boot magic um, onto the uh, onto the like stack as well, and then we jump to the link address. So like um, that's where we're gonna pick up with uh, SRT zero dot S. Um, that's basically it, right? Like uh, I've had to do this video multiple times because you know sort of one time it just didn't record. So uh, I've gotten <laughs> this video down hopefully a lot shorter than it was the first time. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, when we get into SRT, we'll have to look at, I'll probably do a whole video just on that one file because, well, technically it's gonna be two because it references uh, uh, GIDT.S. Um, but we have to set up like a global descriptor table so that we can like, run boot in protected mode because that's what boot expects to be run in. We also have to set up the like uh, interrupt table um, <clears throat> because we still don't have like, you know, our PCI configuration space set up. We don't know how to like print stuff other than by using the BIOS. So we have to set up a way to like switch back and forth between real mode and protected mode whenever we want to print stuff to the screen until everything gets configured. So um, <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of what goes on in SRT uh, 0.s and GIDT, mostly in GIDT.s really. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Um, this is, you know, what we would do if we were doing load CHS. Um, I guess, okay, that's not all it. I'm gonna gloss over some of this other stuff. Load LBA is what we do when we have logical, or so it's not logical block addressing. I'm pretty sure it's linear block addressing. Um, but yeah, this FSB to sector is where we convert the file system block, you know, number to the sector number. Um, and yeah, this is like the interrupt call that happens. This is where we actually do that conversion. Um, and if you look into this real closely, you'll see like how they handle the fact that you can address blocks at a finer granularity than their size for file system blocks. Um, that whole thing that I was talking about. And uh, this is, you know, the subroutines. I never, I didn't really go into these even in MBR, but these are the subroutines to print, uh, you know, a message, um, which, you know, is composed of a subroutine to print, you know, just a character. Um, yeah, here's the load FS block, which is originally loaded with CHS. Um, and this is some data and that's it, right? This signature has to be there for the MBR.S to load this correctly. But uh, yeah, that's actually it. Uh, thanks for watching. I. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Peace.